Sorry. <laughs> okay, hold on. What's going on? You are listening to thisweekingeek.net's The Prototype. You might be wondering, well, where the hell have you been? Well, it's been a year, to say the least. But I am one of your hosts today. I am Mike the Birdman, but I'm not alone. As I trek through this unusual year for gaming, I'm joined by my co-host in New Berlin. Uh, Alex, the producer. And Ken, somewhere in the wilds of New Jersey, I'm sure somewhere near Camp Crystal Lake. Uh, actually, I think that's uh, the one of the places that they filmed is like pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> Fucked up and amazing. So, yes, guys, we are back here on thisweekingeek.net to talk about video games, the video game industry. And you might be wondering, well, why didn't you guys cover all the things that happened uh, during the summer? And I've got... <laughs> Reasonable responses to that. <laughs> Basically, everything, for the most part, after the E3 coverage we did was horseshit. Yeah, there was <laughs> nothing I gave a rat ass about. And as we record this, which I think is what, October 5th? right october blah, 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 any yeah. day <laughs> yeah any day uh basically today was the final reveal of the smash brothers character for the final dlc that is the most memorable piece of news i can think of in the last couple of months outside of some yeah. stuff out of the nintendo direct that happened yeah. last yeah. month i couldn't even tell you what happened at the fucking playstation direct other than venom 2 and well, well god of war we'll go into that like i'll, I'll here's a brief part from the summer Every small indie company had their own direct that we thought was going to be maybe interesting and ended up boiling into a whole bunch of nothing. Here from the top of my memory, because it's it's not topical, we don't need to list everything. Here's what I remember. Uh, Nacon ran their own, uh, and they, they're the ones that make the racing games that we've received for review, and they did the... Uh, I think it's critically uh, like underappreciated the, uh, the werewolf game that came out in January. Yeah, um, I, I thought like it's a budget title, but it's fun. Uh, their big announcement was that they got the RoboCop game. Yes, they got the RoboCop license. Which it's funny because I remember talking to some reps on uh, Twitter who do stuff for uh, Deep Silver. And I'm like, you know, guys, you really want to make my year. Give me a new fucking RoboCop game. <laughs> and then this well, happened. Yeah, so oh. Nikon got it. And then they also showed off. Uh, that they're building like a high-end uh, arcade racing uh, reboot of, I th- what was it? Um, it's the uh, not Top Gear. What the hell is it called? Hard driving. No, Grid? it was Split Second. No, it's the it's the one that's been around for a very long time. But I'm drawing a blank on it. But it hasn't had games in not Lotus. What the? F- Give me a second here. Ridge Racer. I think it had no, a bunch of I Rich Racer, I think is Sony. That's Namco. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's the game series that had a bunch on Xbox before uh I think it was Metropolis not Metropolis Street Racer. Uh why am I drawing a blank? It, it doesn't it, matter. Yeah, it's the yeah. um God damn it. No, this is going to bug me right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, that's the thing. that There were so many little announcements as to nothing. In fact... Test drive. Test drive. Test, okay, so that's all right. Yeah, there, there's a big one coming out next year. And like, and when, when I say big, I mean they're marketing it like a Forza in, in the, the amount of money they're putting into it. Oh, wow. So you got that. Uh, uh, you, the Gamescom stuff. <laughs> Yeah, which was amounted to a, not a whole lot. Uh, there was one for, uh, what is that company that, that really makes all the indie stuff? They're making Stray, I think. Oh, yeah, the, the oh, uh, cat Annapurna. game. Yeah, Annapurna. They, they showed off a few things that was weird, and it's like, cool, we'll see it when it comes. 
uh, Stray got a lot of these games got pushed to next year, which weren't originally going to be. Uh, there which was not surprising. <laughs> exactly. There was a more recently. There were probably a few things were missing, but there was the THQ Nordic uh, one, where it's like a bunch of games that we forgot existed are having sequels. Uh, and and SpongeBob, new, new SpongeBob, and they also showed off Saints Row. Yeah, which is like evidently a soft reboot of the series to make it more no, in line with Grand Theft Auto. That's not THQ though, right? Is or is it? I think no. I, that is THQ Nordic, but it's Volition. published by yeah by. I thought it was Volition. Volition. Oh yeah, yeah. It's that's right. It's it's because THQ Nordic is part of that Embracer group, which is owns like. Deep a silver million different all, people yeah yeah they own deep silver and and like three or four other big companies yeah so like it's all these little things right and then we get the uh the playstation one that we've been waiting on we basically got the e3 playstation showcase that yeah just like three months later and the only and, thing i can really recall out of that i said venom 2 i meant spider-man 2 they announced for 2023 they got tony todd as venom you got miles morales teaming up with spider-man and they're, basically they're getting their own version of the sinister six storyline i don't know about you guys and craven i was gonna say i got i got real nerd boner when the wolverine one was shown yeah and there's yeah, a lot of easter pretty... eggs hidden in that trailer too there's actually oh, yeah. a license plate like on you, the wall if you were looking at the wall you immediately knew it was wolverine yeah because there's a license plate on the wall that says hlk 181 and that's incredible hulk 181 where the wolverine made his first full appearance where he fought the hulk against the windigo um so yeah that's pretty cool i mean i'm looking forward to that spider-man i'm looking forward to because tony todd uh you a lot of people will know him as candy man he was a pretty cool uh Klingon and Star Trek and recently this past summer he was a uh, scare scare glow in He-Man Masters of the Universe Re- Revelations. So that's going to be awesome. I can't think of a better guy for Venom. So that's cool. I mean, like, I'm looking forward to uh, that. On top of the fact that they they don't necessarily have to modulate his voice that much. Yeah, he's naturally scary sounding. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> And he's on Cameo, and he was, like, stupid cheap, too. I remember last year I considered getting something from him. And he'll do the Candyman voice for you and everything, too. It's kind of awesome. If you were to get him, you have to get him to uh, do the Candyman voice and ask him to give like read like a basic recipe on how to make breakfast. <laughs> just give him the give him the instructions like from all recipes or whatever and just have him read it to you in that voice. Peanut probably, butter cookie. Yeah, he he probably well he'd be like first you crack the eggs. <laughs> then you know, like just to hear I, I'm sure he'd probably snicker at the thought of that's what you asked for was could you could you take like a minute or two and just read this to me because it'll be hilarious. Be my diner. It would be amazing. And um, I mean his cameo in the the pseudo sequel reimagining. Oh, right at the end. There, yeah. That was really, really cool. I thought. Yeah, yeah, that was a good cameo. Yeah, he, he morphs into the original, and then, you know, yeah, it, it's cool. I like that. And you um, know what? He looks great for. He's got to be like oh, seventy, yeah. like nearly seventy, right? Oh like, yeah, he's in his sixties for sure, at least. What else happened during the PlayStation? Because I can't recall. God of anything. War. That was about it. God, yeah, God I of mean. War. And that comes out sometime next year. I'm thinking fall. Yeah, because they're going to need a big holiday game or they'll need something for the summer because Horizon comes out in February. So they say um, I have a feeling something might happen between now and then. Personally. I think Saints Row is going to move that yeah. out of all the games in February. Saints Row is going to move. Yeah, because it's such a packed month. Why would you want to compete against Horizon? And I haven't played it. I bought it. But I haven't played it yet, and it's. I know right, it's going to yeah. be one of those games that's just gonna. It's going to demolish everything unless it's like, I don't know, a Resident Evil or a Halo or something like that. It's that big of an IP now. Well, and, I'm sure. And, I'm pretty sure like Halo's second multiplayer season is going to start around that time too. What is they'll it, probably February March. Yeah, they'll probably yeah. follow the model that like COD is set for. It's like that's exactly what they're doing. Yeah, it's going to be the battle pass typically lasts about 60 days, give or take. 
Well, um, Gran Turismo and, 7, it was announced to come March 4th, right in that window, too. Oh, and it took them forever to finally announce Call of Duty Vanguard. And considering the dumpster fire that is Activision and Satan himself, Bobby Kotick, I'm not surprised. In fact, if you look at any of the advertising for Call of Duty uh, since all this stuff happened, uh, look what names are suspiciously absent from that. And I'm only starting to get uh, uh, also the emails fact that about the beta, stuff now. Also the fact that the beta had hackers up the wazoo oh, yeah. well yeah like <laughs> like that that's that's pretty bad yeah like the beta had hackers warzone still has a pretty big hacking problem they're talking they're gonna have anti-cheat at launch we'll see because i maybe, me and maybe, alex and lamb used to play a shit ton well yeah well you got me uh into it because we were gonna sort of see what it's like to have a full squad running and we played and I stopped like three weeks ago and simply like, I know we were busy doing other things and, and there were sicknesses and yada, yada, but I stopped mostly because they, right after the announcements of uh, whistleblowing and all the, the lawsuits and all the crazy investigations, it, they magically had like terrible glitches and horrible internet problems. And we're not talking like they were getting like denial of service attacks or anything. We're talking, it's like they just gave up on the current game. Yeah, I, and they on still were of offering you, like... They're still, and they've already said, uh, at least on PC, it's going to be another add-on to everything already. So you're going to have to download hundreds of gigabytes of yeah. shit I, I don't play. play I don't play Warzone because I'm not interested in playing with... 90 percent of the morons on the internet but when we did try to check it out when we got the review codes for it what was it last october yeah I remember uh, when we got it, it was like one of the first next gen titles that we had it was uh it ran fine it was 230 gigs to download the main game and everything included and then another hundred to download warzone just to play warzone with the new stuff and yeah. then texture packs and everything else kind of yeah. came out too. So this is going to be like a 400 gig. This is this will be a download that you cannot play on the Series S, period. Because you only have 336 gigs of usable storage. Yep. So they, it's it, they're going to have to reduce the quality of the game, like the assets, just to make it fit. Or so just compress these friggin' things. Well, it would be easy if it was on the PlayStation where they have that built-in decompression API, but I don't know. So it's it's going to be it's going to be weird. Like I, it'll be interesting to check out because I am always interested in the Call of Duty games for the fact that everybody talks about multiplayer, but they generally have a very interesting single-player campaign. Oh yeah, no, they invest a lot in the single-player. It's just nobody talks about it, or they or they joke that nobody plays it. It's like. No, dude. Like that's what I want. That's I, I. I want that. And then as an unwinding thing, I did enjoy playing with you guys. Where it's like, hey, you know, let's play for a couple hours, and then it turns into like nine hours, and it's it's like seven in the morning, and we're like, oh god, we should go to bed. Because, and a lot of that was just like roaming around, but just like shooting the shit and talking. So I, I get the uh, appeal of that. I ha I don't understand the appeal of people that just play multiplayer. It's just not my thing. Yeah. Um, whereas once i play through the campaign once maybe twice that's all i do is play multiplayer and like stomp kids in like certain lobbies i yeah. don't like warzone because of the whole you know to me I, I don't like the one life sort of thing but now you can redeploy and respawn island and all that bullshit well, but you know what it's gonna sound actually i hope they're not listening because my idea they might steal is i would love it if Instead of paying eighty dollars for this game, for me because I don't, you know, other than the fact that we're reviewing it and I play some of the online, I don't know if I would personally get enough value out of the pure online multiplayer us versus anybody sort of thing. That that is like the bread and butter of the series. I would be willing to pay thirty bucks, you know, twenty five American, thirty five Canadian, whatever it works out to, or even twenty bucks if it let me play the single player campaign only once. You beat once you beat it, you can't replay it unless you pay for the full game. I would pay twenty bucks to get a single playthrough of the ten hours, 
and, and that'd be done with it. But if I say that now, they're probably going to listen. <laughs> and they're going to go, wait, we can, you, we can charge for a single playthrough? And I don't mean like you have to play through in one session. I mean, once you get the trophy for beating the game, you can either you know, pay for the full version to redo it over and over again, or that you're locked out. I, I could, I would actually be okay with that. Basically you'd pay 20 bucks for a rental because I don't feel that unless you're really heavy into online gaming or you have a good squad of people you play with, like in a, in co-op mode, I don't see the 60, 80, $90 value that, and then on top of that, all the, the friggin' people that spend like 500 bucks on DLC. Yeah. Um, I, the one thing about Vanguard that they did say at uh, Gamescom was the fact that 20 multiplayer maps will be available at launch. Which is good which because is the great last variety. couple of the last couple of titles had a pretty anemic selection of maps. Uh, Call of Duty Black Ops or no, the one before Modern Warfare didn't launch with a lot of maps to start and certain people hated certain maps like if you told me hey we're gonna play a bunch of cod tonight and if i get into uh the map on england i think it's called P- uh, piccadilly if i get on that map i'm probably gonna leave the fucking lobby because i hate that map and so did everybody and they actually addressed it in a community note thing one day saying this map will show up less often in r- rotation and if it wasn't that map you get stuck in you get stuck in the afghanistan caves which was again a map that started to get cycled out of rotation and then they were forced to update maps more and more um cold war was great all things considered once they started expanding the season's past content and they started giving you a lot of stuff but there was a lot of a lot of dlc which you didn't have to buy like there weren't pay to win guns but getting certain guns unlocked early could present you with a bit of an advantage if you had those guns maxed out fast. I liked the single player campaign for its creativity more in Cold War than I did Modern Warfare, that Mm -hmm. I guess reimagining. But I did feel it was quite obvious that the engine they used for Modern Warfare was much more capable graphically. Yes. Even though we we were playing on next gen. Like it was, yeah, it's like ray tracing. Yeah, but it was like ray tracing a PS3 game uh, versus like the character models were so much better. Looking. And I think this new one is using the yeah, engine it's using from Modern Warfare. Modern Warfare, but with ray tracing turned on. So yes, we were, we're finally going to see something that looks next gen. Now, they also showed off, I think, Battlefront 2042 or whatever the hell it is. Which that's, that's Battlefront. I that's so open. don't that open- care. I mean that open beta is technically free if you have Game Pass Ultimate. <laughs> but what ba- the fucking do, Michael? I, I call it Battlefront. Won't pay more than twenty bucks for an online game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. pretty much. I, I mean, Battlefield does have the prestige of being a really good game. Yeah, the problem good. is there's no campaign, so I don't care. And but- when Call of Duty tried this, I'm looking at you, Black Ops Four. The only thing that saved that game was Blackout, and Blackout was the precursor to Warzone. Nobody played the "quote unquote" campaign, which amounted to character missions that you could beat in about twenty minutes. Yes, and it wasn't a very good year for zombies either. Um, So I I don't because I didn't play the online Modern Warfare. Did it have a zombies mode? No, uh, that's only certain certain years get anytime Treyarch is touching it now this yeah, new one yeah. this, this new one's getting zombies though. yes because it's yes. treyarch sledgehammer and a few other oh that's right uh, it's yeah. basically cold, everyone cold war was somebody else's game that they had to come in and fix or no it was vanguard cold war was sledgehammer and raven software i think yeah yeah but i remember reading wasn't it that we heard that they had the big turmoil was they had two games in development and the one that Multiple was supposed platforms. to come out last year, did, which was this, which was Vanguard, was way behind schedule because they weren't okay with the quality of the game or something. Mm-hmm. And and they, I think they actually demoted the studio working on it to only be a support role because they. And then I think they they pulled in Treyarch to, and the other studios. They to, said, "Hey Treyarch, can you actually can get, you finish this faster?" And they were like, "Sure." And how they did it was to use an older engine. Yeah. They like they were working on a new engine. I think so. I believe the next year, like like twenty twenty two, 
we're actually going to see the first new only next gen engine meaning we will like next year we won't see cross generation on it yeah thank because God. it'll be truly thank optimized God. which i mean in the long run the way that they did this hubbub back and forth and and all the the turmoil within the company itself if anything good comes out of that shit would be that they had an extra full 16 months to make the engine work for the whatever the next gen engine is hmm. so i mean I it, it, it's interesting but same with like most shooters i i do like we get them for review so i mean i'm, I'm not you know i can't really be like oh he's whining but he gets it for free uh, i get it because we're doing it for review obviously but unless these games come down like to a ridiculous i mean i don't price, i i flat out don't buy buy any of those uh next gen charged extra 10 bucks things yeah like some some companies have been pretty good about not having it more i think ubisoft so far had oh had ubisoft's it. dedicated to not doing that yeah. which is They've good said that like, like you can say what you will about the company and some of their their major problems again corporately i think they're the biggest company that hasn't done it and refused to do it yep i think um, oh and much, and I, technically microsoft but yeah yeah now, microsoft hasn't either, but they have right? game pass so it doesn't really yeah. matter one thing that i was surprised that sony didn't do during the showcase because it was during the month of september when the pre-orders for the playstation 5 opened a year ago i'm surprised we didn't get something on playstation plus which they did b- before on playstation 4 i'm pretty sure we got something. i know we got something on playstation 3 and one thing I'm really surprised, and this is probably going to come out of left field for uh, you guys, The Last of Us, its day, I think the day the infection starts in the world of The Last of Us happens in September. And the studio that's doing this has shown some screenshots of Ellie and Joel, uh, Pedro Pascal and Lady Mormont yep. from Game of Thrones. Why didn't we see a uh, like a behind the scenes sizzle reel or here's a 30 second trailer or something i believe pandemic, they, they, were, they were six months pandemic behind. and also they wrapped filming like beginning of september well they yeah. could have shown something or at least had the actors mm. here's a them talking for it's, two minutes and here's part of a scene it's it not, was it's, just too it's early. HBO that owns the show, right? So, yeah, or, or, yeah, it's an HBO we're, thing. We're we're gonna see that if anything during like the DC fandom. Yeah, no, which not is show it at DC fandom. No, because but like they've the, already said, but like no, you know, something around it'll, that time. It, it'll be one of those where they have it on their press site that way, because uh, mm. they were supposed to. The original schedule was to finish filming in April, before the pandemic right. threw everything off, because that would have left them with four months roughly. Of, of post production, of post time to, to at least get a, a trailer done to get a trailer, yeah. But yeah, uh, like there wasn't a lot out of this thing that I really cared about. I mean, even Horizon, I like the idea of the IP. I think the lead character looks awesome, and fucking, you're fighting robot dinosaurs. But yeah, I can't recall anything. I mean, even God of War two, the only reason I care is because it's Teal'c. That's the only reason I give a shit. Yeah, because like, I did not like 2018's well, game. Well, you also you also didn't finish it. Yeah, because and you, it's, and, and it you played wasn't it on my a, thing. You played it on a baseline PS4. You I didn't did even, with the on, original hardware, and drive. also the accessibility Sucked. was not great on that. Yeah. yeah, when I played it, I played it in backwards compat mode uh, with the 60 FPS working on the PS5, and it was so much better than when I attempted it on the PS4 Pro back in the day. Uh, same with Horizon. Now, the other things that were announced at the PlayStation Showcase were uh, the announcement of the Knights of the Old Republic remake. Which being, is cool. Yeah, which is an exclusive. Sony exclusive, yes. Which is, remember, the original But will also was be a, coming to PC. Yeah. yeah. Well, remember, the original was an Xbox exclusive. That's a pretty big Yeah, game. exactly. So it's just a flip a roof. Uh, yeah. Which I think looks cool. But again, it was a title reveal. I'm concerned because Aspire's not done anything above the level of basic well they jobs. they literally after they finished porting uh knights to switch uh, switch no well i mean that's already coming that yeah. that's announced to be coming it's not technically out yet but yeah i think i, I think mean, they've actually that's this is the only thing they're working on but Except, this is the only thing they're working on but they also 
like manned up in terms yeah. of I, I, I think did, they doubled or tripled their Yeah, I staff. did read on, on, it was either Games Industry. Gama Sutra, I think, is just called, they changed the name of the company. I think it's just like gamedeveloper.com or something now. But they they reported, I think it was, they had a job listings for 25 people, which, and that was that's not including the fact that they hired, I think they said three or four previous devs that that directly worked yeah yeah that directly worked on it that left during the the great exodus of of, uh of anthem yeah anthem and andromeda and dragon age yeah so it's it's some of the key like and we're not talking like just like pencil pushers we're talking the people that were directly involved so there's it sounds like they hired a team just to work on it yeah so that'll be good uh, Project Eve was shown, which some people at first thought was like, oh, is it, you know, Parasite Eve? No, this is that Korean game that a lot of people are saying looks like Bayonetta, but to me, I was like, oh, this is just like Korean version of Devil May Cry. I, I'll, I'll be honest, it's the first Korean game that actually doesn't look like trash. Yeah. Oh, like, <laughs> like that stupid looking one that looks like Pokemon? yeah uh where it looks like it's gonna that was originally seizures. developed as an mmo and then they changed it it's gonna and, and same with like how every press company has been trying to shove black desert online down everybody's throats i don't give a shit about korean uh, mmos the only thing about black desert that's awesome is its character creator yeah <laughs> yeah i've heard that that is really good and that but this this looks like like you said it looks better than mo- like it doesn't look like the janky tech demo stuff that a lot of their games end up being this looks like a legit a, actual yeah, video game <laughs> it, it, it looks like what if the near team from square enix went and made a game with the capcom team yeah so i mean it looks cool um that's no word on when it's coming just that it's coming uh then there was tiny tina's wonderland um interesting, that looks fine maybe. it looks exactly it looks fine um the other it's big, exactly what you think it's going to be. <laughs> Rainbow Six Extraction that we will be reviewing. We'll probably um, be getting like a team squad together to play that. Um, again, it looks fine, but that was pushed again. Uh, that was supposed to be out like this week. And yeah, and that, that got pushed to was, January. Yeah. Uh, Alan Wake Remastered. Which, which uh, right now? Which, was, which is which, out this week. As, or last I, week, actually. I think, I think as of today. No, I think it was out last week. Because uh, reviews dropped due for like rele- Friday, due for release October fifth, it says. Oh, so okay. today, yeah. So, uh, so oh yeah, it dropped so, on Friday. Yeah, you know, that, that makes sense. A lot of times they'll have that happen. Just like Monkey Super Monkey Ball had an embargo for the 29th, and it's out today. So yeah, that can happen. Um, Grand Theft Auto Five, whoop did you do? Um, and there's still the rumored remasters or something that's supposed to come out sometime soon. Yeah. We'll think, see, but that's I, I never think, been officially confirmed. I think that's to get them on the Switch, which would mean that they could just yeah. have higher res versions on other consoles. See, the uh, the only one I want is uh, Vice, City. Vice City, and I would be willing to play San Andreas again if the controls are a little bit better. Uh, um, I mean, 3 is still... Three is fine. Fun. Yeah, it's goofy fun, but I like two because it's basically Scarface with Tommy Versetti, and he's the best well, protagonist outside of Grand Theft Auto V's three. Um, now, now, if they did it, like, it's probably going to be on the Switch. It'll be like all three games in one. If they release it on major consoles that have more storage space, it would be nice if they could include Chinatown Wars and Vice City Stories. Yes, that that would be good because the, those were ported to PS2. Yeah, so I mean, it'd be great if they could include all that or make it make it part of like the ultimate. You know how they always have an ultimate tier to download. Uh, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, <laughs> which no, it's you. weird. <sighs> I've seen some videos recently where it looks okay. Yeah, yeah but like that's about the, it. It's not. It's not exceptional. Been some, there's been some hands-on stuff, and people have said. It's not as trash as I thought it was going to be. No, it's because it actually has a decent team working on it for the whole game. <laughs> yeah, like not just not just a hatch. Like, let's be honest, that the the Avengers game was obviously not Crystal Dynamics in their element, and Eidos came in to try to help, but like 
it was a hatchet job all around. It was multiple studios trying to fix things, and it was clearly like Anthem. I mean, the the biggest problem that Avengers had is you tried to make it a, an on live service, have a really good single player campaign, give us missions that come every couple of months or weeks or whatever, good story content. Well, I don't want to match me match make with idiots and if you're going to give me bots to do something where, don't make them fucking stupid where's my pre-order launch spider-man bonus yep and we're over a year now and they I just think, won't i talk think about he's it. coming december yeah but we'll they won't fucking even, see they won't even talk about it like they, there's no they, there's no player base anymore you know when they when they had open q a's they would refuse to answer they wouldn't even say defer to sony on that they just would skip the entire the question altogether and it's like that's bad pr like yeah there, there is there's people say there's no bad pr that no there is bad pr when you won't even acknowledge something and um, there are even people in the community that square kind of trots out when, whenever they want to promote avengers and some of these people are straight up fucking shills and it's really yeah, fucked up even um, them though some of them are saying they're not interested in guardians that says a lot. That means that that Square isn't paying money to these people anymore because even they don't have. On faith top in the of the, on top of the fact that most of the those people are streamers and they know immediately, like that's a non-streamable game. Yeah, it's like too, you can't it's have, you can't stream the Guardians game. Period. It's gonna, it's gonna have license. It's impossible music on a on a Disney property. Yeah, it's impossible. And even if they did make a version that goes, they also know that the game is is not liked by the, the like when they remember when they announced the avengers at the uh the square enix i think it was was yep. it e3 yeah and they and, hinted that no, oh no, we've got a guardians game in the works no when they announced it and they said it was live service there were audible boos from the yep. media and they yep. they had a look of surprise on their face like they had no idea well that's because they, that's they because so square has been square's been chasing this live service train ever since deus ex human revolution yeah and and uh, the problem was well okay well, it, it somewhat worked for the deus ex games in that they were just solid single player games and then they added stuff so it's like cool okay yeah, i get it but you have to start with the, the groundwork of having a really solid game before you you can't build a game around let's drain money from people or people will notice yep so uh, you got that vampire the masquerade blood hunt not interested uh, yeah, what yeah. the fuck? Vampire the Masquerade is a is a storytelling game of dark gothic horror exploring humanity. It's not fucking Battle Royale. And it's also not one of the Nacon game. Like it's not the um it's not the Bloodlines game everybody was been wanting. Remember Nacon had to put that on hold while they got a new developer. Yeah, on top because, of it, like yeah. ju- it, that's just a mess in and of itself. <laughs> exactly. So don't expect that game till 2023. Uh, Death Loop. I'm sorry, I just don't give a shit. Yeah, and well, okay. The reviews Here's... have been trashing it too. You either love it well, or hate it. Well, depends. Yeah, it's it's very divided. Uh, from what I can tell, this is a game that I will happily play once it comes to Game Pass in a year. Yep, same here. <laughs> I ain't paying exactly. for it. Exactly. I, I I figure I'm going to play for like two hours and be pissed off and not want to play it anymore. Uh, uh yeah. Pr- Given given the fact that you, given the way that you play games and how you don't like certain elements of games, yeah, no, D- Death and, Loop is not your and cup yet, of tea. The concept for this, I love TV shows and movies that do this concept. The problem mm-hmm. with games is, I will get very bored and very frustrated if it is like if it's the same thing over and over again. And I mean, I had a good enough time. Well, here's the with, here's with, the kicker. Here's the kicker with Death Loop the ai is brain dead as fuck on purpose like the the ai is supposed to be brain dead because if it wasn't brain dead you'd get really really pissed off yeah like so i, I get it i it's the kind of game that i would love to play with like a pc like on pc and then like load up a trainer program just to check out the world with like god mode on yeah simply because like i would i'd love to explore it but i don't want to constantly get into the same combat i also really 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 don't like the concept of the other player that has really good ai popping into your game and killing you 
I, I don't I don't like that anxiety. I don't need that. I mean, for it, me, it's the balanced I, a lot more than you think. The from what it, I can tell. The idea behind Deathloop from a concept, I think, is really, really, really interesting. But the amount of people I saw bitch about it online has just completely turned yeah. me off of it. Like, this, say, it depend. It, it depends on who you. T- it, you got to. There's a curation of who, who. You follow that has your same preferences. I mean, ninety percent of the people that are exp- that played it thinking oh it's this kind of game it's not that kind of game yeah like i i understand the accessibility in the, in it is isn't great but i'm a very cap- capable player i just have difficulty reading sometimes and my oh boy my, yeah my, you're, you're gonna have a problem <laughs> yeah my yeah like it's, like it's, i'm it's, a good shot but i'm just I, not great at reading if you if you need accessibility especially visual accessibility the only two companies that are really you know killing it are sony studios and and ubisoft ubisoft Ubisoft, microsoft's getting better from what i hear yeah microsoft Uh, is working with able gamers so yeah they are and (laughs) square did but not square uh deck nine with uh life is strange has a uh a visual option that is large and there's one that even says hella big and (laughs) and hella big is basically turning the sub the subtitles into like 24 point font oh that's like, that's exactly the kind of font i would want <laughs> yeah it takes up maybe an inch on your screen like it's it's like there, there's no and you can even do things like change the background to have it uh be though i white, do think it's uh, uh, the one thing about like it, yeah the one thing i laughed out of about true colors was the streamer mode where it just mutes like yeah, major that, parts of the game. <laughs> that that sounds like it was obviously an afterthought. Deck nine wasn't a oh one hundred percent an afterthought, but it was it's fucking hilarious to but watch that, streamers that's play what it. You, that's what we need to see more in games is, is tech size getting a, a two or three options. Yeah, please, especially with op- opacity being turned off, so that you know you can have a solid I mean, like, black I'm, background. I'm playing on it. I played Psychonauts two on a. 32 inch monitor sitting in a bed about six feet away and some of the menu text was hard to read yeah there's no problems with that with any of the ubisoft titles of the last three or four years or more and and sony though i have issues with how uh ubisoft does their menus where it's where the cursor like speed is just so slow well, as shit we're, our like our reviews are going to be coming for far cry but i can say this when you start far cry up not even if you've you not turning any um accessibility on by default when the menu pops up it has uh narration, narration. it'll say uh, press the cross button to access this press this to press the menu and it will mm. guide you the very first time you start it up oh, to, well, to there was change another... any of those settings there was another recent game that did that that I was really surprised. Oh, it was uh, Artful Escape. Oh, okay, yeah, I've, I've heard that, that was, yeah, that is how you do it. You know what? And if somebody gets annoyed saying, I don't want it on, it, it's not on in the main game. But, when you, but if you when you boot the game up, if you it'll say press, press this to start, and it has like the, the robot voice telling you that. But if you sit on the main screen for an extended period of time and you wait past maybe 30 seconds or more, it will just then start guiding you to go to the accessibility options on how to alter things because it will assume that you're still having trouble seeing. Yep. I'm like, that is how you do Like, I'll give them all the praise in the world. They are like the leaders in accessibility for gaming. Um, oh, hands down. Now, other things, Uncharted uh, Legacy of Thieves Collection, PC, kind of neat. Um, well, it's only the fourth game and not the actual yeah. rest yeah, the, of the franchise, which yeah, is really it's stupid. It's the fourth game and the spinoff, which I haven't played either. Um, and then you got, uh, I'm probably going to pronounce it wrong, but it's uh, Tachia, or yeah, Tachia. That's the one that is the, um, uh, I think it was the The, uh, in, the, the uh, token indie game that they showed off. Token indie game that, that in a sense is neat because it's based on the cultural issues that the island is having in real life right so i'm like and it's like made by indigenous people kind of neat uh one that's that would be a game pass or playstation plus game if i ever saw one because it's not something i would go out of my way to play but i do think if you're looking to support you know indie devs especially considering it's pretty much a third world country that developed it 
Yeah. So it's like, cool. Like that's, that's a way to get like their country into the public eye. Uh, then there was the, uh, like, Oh, that was the, what was it? The kid a or amnesia exhibition, the Radiohead expedition or exhibition. Yeah. I'm not interested, but I, I do like that. They do these weird things. Um, and, uh, Tokyo ghost or ghostwire Tokyo. I am Just super interested in that. I mean, if it weren't for the fact that I know it's going to be on Games Pass in a year after it comes out, yeah, like that is, I would be I, really pumped to have it. I'm, if I and you know me, I like, had I'm, a PS5. I, I'm not gonna, I guess I, I could stream it because it would just be me screaming every couple seconds as a, <laughs> as a, as a crazy, as a creepy Japanese ghost comes at me in the first person. It'll just, it, it's just, I'm gonna have to keep like. I got to wear like diapers or something so I don't pee my pants because it's just going to be like, ah, weird freaking monster. You're going to think that I'm freaking PewDiePie here screaming. But uh, but you've got that. And then very Junji Ito in its uh, look. I yeah, will say that. Very much so. Like, And then I guess uh, we've talked. Oh, Forspoken had a big showcase. Yes. That, that game I'm so in on. Like it's it's basically uh like parkour mixed with uh I guess prototype slash uh infamous gameplay, but with yeah in in a Final Fantasy style world. Uh in a Final and, Fantasy style world and then the story is an isekai. <laughs> yeah, well yeah, and I was like I'm watching it, I'm going, Oh wait, is I, I I think I joke with you, I'm like, it's probably gonna be an isekai and like and then because we were like live uh, chatting back and forth and then i'm like oh wait so she commits suicide and, and as she commits suicide she goes into another world <laughs> no it looks like she's like about to yeah like she's gonna and step then... off the ledge and then and she goes through a portal so i'm like that's very fitting for like what it is i didn't like the dub and from what i can tell i thought that it was like a lip sync issue it looks to me more like they didn't have her lines of dialogue completely recorded yet for in-game mixing. I think she was just narrating on top of the footage. Possibly. Because some parts of it, like it not, it sounded even, like, even just like the English track in general, it looks like everyone yeah, is that way. They were pulled, like, they didn't, they, they were didn't properly forward, mix it. Yeah. It was pulled forward into the forefront. That could be a stylistic choice. So you could hear the trailer. But it it doesn't sound like even remotely close to even like the cheapest low budget square title that has a dub. It sounds like the what happened with Persona Five Royal on the Japanese track. Exactly. So there's no way with but with something this big that that is the mix they're going for. So anybody yeah, that's, no. that was put off by that, don't even think about that. That's like, because if yeah. that if it comes out, I mean, it's it, also very early on in yeah. its development. So. Because it, it's coming in the spring, so I expect that to be sometime in April or May, probably the same time slot that Final Fantasy VII had. Yeah, uh, and that's that was the PlayStation Showcase. The only thing that happened since then that they, it was a big deal is they finally enabled. Uh, m2 support for your uh, external hard drive, or sorry internal expansion hard drives which for i put everyone a, yes i put it yeah I, you know i was i had contacted sony a few times i'm like can i get access to this because all these other outlets were and they never responded to me we just weren't picked it's very possible that they weren't doing canadian outlets in the test program even though it said you could be in a pool to get it I, I asked around and I didn't hear about anybody that was in Canada that got. Yeah, the, uh, there was yeah, nobody seems like... from our side that remotely even. And I'm talking about like it. even big sites that are Canadian based didn't get access to do it. Yeah, I, I mean, don't. It e also seems like Xbox has just a better system for their insider system yeah, program. Definitely. So I, I put a 250 gig in, which sounds tiny, but that's enough for about eight or so review games of like yeah i mean most like of you, the games that are like you added an extra like one fourth of what you had yeah and and you know what's on my main drive or was call of duty call of duty <laughs> call of duty and and like one other game that was 100 gigs everything else that i've received for review has been like 16 gigs or less so i just have it set so that all ps4 games auto install to the uh the samsung drive and then I can manually move over a PS5 game if I want to. Uh, moving games over is hilarious. It is really slow copying from the external or from the extra drive 
to the internal and that's apparently due to how they have their drivers coded for drive durability on the internal drive uh basically less wear and tear if it, if it copies slower so i but, think i think it's different on xbox if i remember correctly it, is, it yeah. actually is very similar in terms of speed going yeah, back and forth it is because of the way they designed theirs but this way i copied 80 gigabytes in about 10 seconds and i was like yeah. what the actual fuck because it copies at like seven gigs seven and i'm not talking gigabit yeah. it's full gigabytes because it's, it's seven gigabytes per second <laughs> and it was it maxes it out and it was not getting hot or anything because i put a, a heat sink on and i will eventually get a larger drive but it's it's good enough for now so i mean there's that and yeah. then we go um because i don't uh mike you're probably going to be getting a external or an extra drive what, christmas time maybe hopefully well i'm hoping my mom and my sister-in-law get me a hard drive for my birthday because uh, actually um this came to the door yesterday um i got a birthday present from my uh amazon wish list someone sent me the heat sink that i needed oh neat so i'm thinking okay well i guess i'm committed now um yeah because I, I, the hardest part was i almost cut myself taking off the side panel <laughs> Yeah, because I because I'm not fucking doing this. You're fucking. Doing I actually this. don't. I I don't think you could because of the 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 position you have to be in for the leverage for it. Oh fuck! I fuck. I, man. Yeah, I yeah. Like it's you, even even norm even normal people that are taking apart this tech yeah. on a general basis are having trouble taking these like flaps off. Like you can't do it from a desk sitting position. You have to be standing to get the leverage you need. It's ridiculous. Uh, like. The way it's positioned, you lift up the corner, but it doesn't really lift up. You have to lift up and yank as hard as you can towards yourself. I luckily didn't scratch anything, but almost everybody I've seen online has scratched their system doing it. So I'm still I, looking to get a new uh, PlayStation shell, and I wish PlayStation would offer some official well, aftermarket stuff now, already. Uh, now, I know how to do it, so I can do it for you when you do decide to go that route. Yeah. But once you got that side panel off, which took me 10 minutes, and I thought I was going to break the plastic in half. <laughs> and then once I did it, I'm like, that's how you do it? Like, It's really one of those situations where you're like, really? That's it? Uh, and it also feels like once it's off, it's easier to take off every time. Like, It's clearly like, I don't know if they heat treat it when they put it on to, to sort of they shape the place. Um, but yeah once it's off it is a single screw takes off the panel uh and then another screw to take off the uh the mounting uh bracket spot you put it in turn it on done easy peasy it was like like the ps4 pro was a little tricky to pull it off the ps4 was hella hard because you you almost felt like you were breaking the plastic bezel like, yeah to, to pull like, it off. when i did my first hard drive install on my playstation 4 i got something called a nyco um data bank so you, I had, the full, you bought the nyco data bank so yeah the full size was, you, you had a two or four terabyte one i think didn't you four yeah 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 god i missed that thing now okay. that was hard like this is as easy as it was to do it on the PlayStation three slim. Hmm. Like it's, it's like one screw slide out the tray. Like that's how easy it is. As long as you can get the side panel off. So, you know, now that I've done it, I'll definitely do it for you. And it's no problem. Um, and I would suggest like, in my case, it was easy enough doing it for the 250 because you're, you've got a digital only system. I can swap discs out if I need to yada, yada. And I don't mind downloading cause I have, you know, good bandwidth and everything, but, because you're somebody who likes to keep a lot of games on there, you're going to want the terabyte one. I don't know if two terabytes is worth it for the cost yeah, no. ratio yet. At this like, point, two terabytes is it's a like, little too much. It goes from being like $200 um, for a one or like one when it's on sale, like one seventy one eighty for a one terabyte to like $300 in Canadian yeah. money. It's like it is a little more than double. So you're not even getting the same, uh, you know, you know, dollar for gigabyte ratio, unless you wait maybe Boxing Day or something. Mike, if you didn't get one at Christmas, maybe Boxing Week you'll be able to get a two terabyte for like seventy bucks off or something. But at the very like a terabyte would last you more because it's actually a lot more than the internal storage because there's only six hundred and sixty seven gigs available on the uh the you know the, the main system. So you would have about nine hundred free 
in the, this one plus so i mean it'll be enough so there there's that uh and then i guess we've got the nintendo announcements right yep yeah this was a uh, little bit more exciting this one i kind of cared more about than i did anything uh this was interesting in that they announced two other showcases it's like hey here's a direct to showcase two other directs that are coming <laughs> And they, those being the uh, the direct that we just had for the Sakurai Presents one. And then I guess, was there a Animal Crossing one coming next month? Uh, I think sometime this, this month. M- sometime this month. Oh, this month. Probably okay, the yeah. end of the month. So good for all those fans, I guess. Um, and then probably a Pokemon one, right? Uh, no, there is actually no Pokemon direct yet. Uh, they just like shadow dropped new trailers for... Maybe they're not gonna. Uh, it'd be weird if they didn't stuff. do one for Pokemon, right? Like usually, there's something. I mean, they'll they'll probably do like a one. direct mini. They might do something at the end of the month, but or would or would it be from the Pokemon company? And it, not... it would be directly from the Pokemon company, if anything. Um, but I doubt it, given the fact that, I mean, the it's, remakes. It's just, yeah, they're just gonna drop. Do you think they'll do uh, it for Arceus? In... I mean, the latest trailer that dropped last week for Arceus adds like a whole bunch of other stuff that they talk that they talked about. They added like they're adding gym, their version of gym leaders and stuff. Um, it looks a lot better. <laughs> I the will frame, say that the frame it looks a looks, hell of a lot better. The frame rate looks so bad. The frame rate looks way better in the newest trailer. Maybe because they're working on 4K hardware they haven't announced. <laughs> But like genuinely, like the new trailer looks a lot better in terms of frame rate. It doesn't like look like it's chugging. So I mean, you had that. I'm trying to think. What else did we have? Uh, I mean, it the... showed off that weird triangle game. Still don't triangle, get the tri- triangle, strategy. triangle strategy, which it's still, is still its official name. name. It's still a bad name. <laughs> I mean, it's then again, o- Octopath was a bad name, but it ended up being a good game, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, uh it it's it, it's a little long in the tooth in my opinion but tri- well yeah triangle strategy like well i mean it's, it's better than uh when they re-released final fantasy tactics final fantasy tactics war of the lions <laughs> like or mm. or is it any worse than like 90 percent of the, of the fire emblem game titles Cro- chronicles of the black serpent sword master well, ultra I mean... omega <laughs> fried chicken teriyaki number one like <laughs> well, i mean like that's that's every title you'll, you'll laugh there. you'll laugh at what the title of the neck at, at the supposed remake that's on the docket for fire emblem is uh records of the it's uh it's basically th- what is widely considered the best uh story out of the entire franchise out of the jap from the japanese audience and that's the rumored is, remake that they're doing. Is it the the one that came out like on Super Nintendo and like way late, like in ninety eight or ninety nine? I believe uh, like, so. Like Fissia or something like that. Or it was called. It, it's it's the it's Grand Crest War. I think is the name of it. Um, if it's the one I'm thinking of, it was they had stopped selling Nintendo games or Super Nintendo games at retail, even in Japan, because it was like three years into the the N sixty four, and it was only sold through like nintendo power or whatever oh, sorry there. it's a genealogy of the holy war is the name of the game yeah that i think that's the one it was like like uh, remember this is a, this was like a six okay 96 so it's not, super nintendo okay, so that's the last one that came out in re- regular retail because they had one in like 99 like you would not believe how late it was <laughs> uh, yeah 99 is yeah no 90 99 is uh i believe roy's game something like that like it was way beyond the system's life cycle and so like sure or or oh yeah no it's it's the uh sequel to uh genealogy okay so if you look it's not going to be as bad as when you look at the the official like if you look at what the pure translated titles of all the tales games when you see like tales of arise in japan it's like 14 words long (laughs) because it's like it's like it's like the dragon quest games like where they have like luminaries of, of the holy blah 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 that sort of shit uh the other big things that they showed off were obviously the switch online plus expansion pack which is uh n64 and genesis games uh it's not worth it for the genesis games because you can get all those every single one of those games and more in the genesis pack that's like 20 bucks except the emulation on some of those is kind of fucked up 
Uh, well, I mean, it's, Nintendo's it's, emulation isn't good either, but yeah, it's, it's M2 that did those, though. Not all of them. Uh, oh, not wait, all of them. Wait, wait, wait. I was going to say you're right. I don't think M2 did they do the Genesis pack? No, it was another no, developer. They, that's right. They, was it? I think it was not way forward. It was like retro something or other company did it. It's one of those sorts. Of, yeah, you're right. It might have been them because M2 was working on the individual ages releases, and those are fantastic. So N64, cool. They had some weird titles that you weren't going to expect, like Sin and Punishment. It's like, really? Yeah, that's a weird cut. Yeah, Um, there's some... Win back. (laughs) You know what, man? If they really want to... What they have on the horizon that they said, oh, we're going to subsequently add these to this to it as well give um, me gold or give me death they won't yeah it. basically <laughs> they gotta pay likenesses rights to uh to brosnan they won't do it i don't uh, know i think nope. there's a possibility you have a better you have nope never there's don't. a lot no we also lot. didn't think Sora was gonna end up in smash no i'm saying they can't do it like they can't even include that version on the rare replay collection yeah because, they can't because eat. They have because to pay the every every actor's likeness. They have to pay every single person, and on top they, of the fact you have to pay the bond license. To M- on top have, of that, you have to pay it to MGM. To pay... MGM. That's one of the last Eon Pictures productions, and Sony, and well, actually not Sony anymore. Oh, that's right. It, yeah, you have to you have to pay it to MGM and Amazon. So. You've got about five people with their hands in the pot for that one version of the game. The only chance you'd ever have is if they ported the version that was like the the remaster one that changed the Bond's look and all the people's looks. It, yeah. it, so it's not worth it. Uh, you'd have a better chance of getting Perfect Dark on there as a cross. I mean, Perfect Dark would be fine. Yeah, uh, but you can get a good copy on the Xbox via Game Pass or, or the retro replay collection but then again i guess if the switch is your only console party on no, i guess and and, and you know as, as cool as it is like we'll probably check like i'll, I'll upgrade and check it oh out yeah same the games but at the same I mean, time I'm gonna... uh you can they can all fuck off until i get my mischief makers because that's all i care <laughs> about i want to play mischief makers uh that is one of the most fun underrated games that almost nobody's ever played like that is that and that be... and that's a deep cut that they might just do it 1080 <laughs> snowboarding man Maybe. Yes, um, please. Uh, Wave Race, I think, is included, right? That's uh, no, Wave Race is not included. Yeah, also, no Pilot Wings. I think there's something weird with that. Like, is it, it's like licensing-wise. Like, yeah, like I, I'm, I'm surprised at that. I would also love to see... I, I don't know, was it Rare that made it? Uh, that made um, Last Core? Last Core, I don't think is Rare. Because that's the one where you're you're getting paid money to bulldoze things in, in a certain amount of time. It's super fun. Yeah, um, that's a pretty cool game. So I mean, there, there's a few others on there that you know I'd love to see. I, I'll laugh because I know what they're going to do. They're going to put like they're gonna be like we're going to get an RPG, and you're like, oh my god, is it the really rare Ogre Battle '64? And it'll be Quest nope. '64 with Brian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or or uh, or was it Aiden Chronicles? The the one attempt that Activision... oh no, it was rare. It was, eh? Because there's yeah. the other turn-based RPG was the horrible Aiden Chronicles, where you couldn't see more than six inches in front of your character because of the fog of war. <laughs> like that, that, those they only have like they literally have four RPGs on the entire platform. It's it, other than if you like you can't count Pokemon using like the controller packages and all that sort of stuff. It's Ogre Battle sixty four, which is the one everybody wants because it's like the most expensive game on the system, um, and that'll drop the price for that game. Period. Oh, it'll, on like, the it's, market. it's never once ever been available anywhere else, not even in Japan. It's only been available in that one format on the cartridge. Yeah, if they ever get the licenses for that. Yeah, and and it would that would actually push people that like in Japan even to upgrade. Because that would it, instant. That would instantly get you subs. Yeah, because the people love Ogre Battle. It, it's it's a niche title, but it would be similar to Sin and Punishment, where they would go. Hey, wow, they're going to put some rare stuff on here. I better get on. Yeah, I mean, and the only thing that, 
that I would say, why are you doing this? Is if they would say, if they say, oh, pay us double to get N64 and Sega Genesis stuff. Or, now, or what if what if they said, here's you pay your expansion subscription, but for some of these more potentially costly titles to get the rights to what if they were like i mean uh, if that's the if if they explain it that way sure yeah but what if they were like hey it's only available with this expansion pack obviously but for some of these titles you have to spend an extra two bucks one time fee to pay the licensing i'm sure somebody would would probably pay it just take my money sort of like how disney does it where you pay for the premium vod and it adds it to your disney plus so that if you're done, if you don't pay for Disney Plus, you can't view it. But once you've paid for it once, it stays in your collection. Well, technically, it doesn't. Be, the, the way the VO, the way the the uh, premium VOD on Disney Plus works is you have it for three months and then you lose it for a month and then it goes up for free for everyone else. Oh, yeah. OK, that's yeah, that's how it works. Uh, so where is that i guess so I, i'm interested to see what happens we may as well get the bayonetta announcement out of the way <laughs> yep yay free. it's cool it's I exactly guess, sure. what you it's exactly what you want from bayonetta they I'm... they finally did something after i think it was like 600 and, it, it, it was like a ridic. it was like over a thousand days worth of it, no news about it was, Bayonetta. it was basically the same as we had for shin megami tensei they were both announced yeah. at the same show, and then we saw nothing. Yeah. And the only difference was we saw the teaser trailer for SMT a year ago. So it, it and then people also, were like, "Where's Bayonetta? also Mikami's just kind of a dick." <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it, it and I saw it, and I'm like, okay, I still think that that, that was a tease to have. Like, I I know it was like they, people are saying it's probably to uh, divert your attention, thinking that it was an Astral Chain game. But I have the. I'm just getting the weird feeling that she's traveled to the astral chain world. I have a feeling it's. A lot of people are speculating it's, it's prequel. a prequel. Yeah, that, that yeah that the Bayonetta world is the same. It's just that this is before. Like the idea of astral chain, Mike. I know you didn't play it. No. But well, the, on top of on top of the fact that that's not the original Bayonetta voice. That's true. Um, yeah, it's the, not the. It, but, but. The voice actress, the act, the original voice actress for Bayo has been playing coy and saying, I don't know. They haven't told me anything. I, so, is it, pro- so, you th- so you think it maybe it could it be multiple realities? Yeah, that's my guess. Like a multiverse type thing? Yep. Like she she's the Astral Chain's Bayonetta, basically? Yep. Yep. Because Mike, Astral Chain is, you know, futuristic police. On top of, on top of the fact that the way her hair looks is a little different yeah well it's it's like she was when she was a little girl okay so that makes sense but yeah astral chain the the big deal there is a futuristic world monsters come out of nowhere and you form bonds and summon creatures to work with you and they're attached to you via like an umbilical chain well it's kind of like what she's doing in the trailer it's also kind of like scale bound too yeah because it Basically, everyone was like, hey, this is the stuff that they were going to do in Scalebound. <laughs> so, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if they wanted to make a connected universe between their games. So, I mean, cool. Um, I mean, we'll definitely check it out when it comes. Uh, Monster Hunter Rise, Sunbreak, no thank you. Um, I mean, my- it's the expansion, and then they also announced separately from the Direct that the expansion is going to be day and date with PC. The PC version is supposedly going to come out before sunbreak launches though yeah uh, which splatoon, is good which splatoon, is what a lot of people have been waiting for so splatoon 3 don't care i do i mean it's but splatoon 3 he, yes well that, mean, that will that will be a you know what you game. you know what you're getting well yeah <laughs> i mean i played a lot of the original and the, the thing that sucks is i got splatoon 2 last year for my birthday when they were clearing them out at a fairly decent price, I haven't even touched it, which fucking sucks. I better trade that in so I can put that towards this. I picked um, up Splatoon 2 when it launched, and I was like, maybe I'll like this because I didn't play the first one. It is the only game I have ever gone back to EB Games, GameStop, and did the satisfaction guarantee and replaced it with something else. I was I played it for one hour and went, nope, and walked right back. 
Uh, it's just not. It's just not for me. I'm like baby's baby's first arena shooter is not my style of game. Uh, then there was Voice of Cards. That is the card based uh, game from Square that I that I will never play uh, oh. ever. I mean, it's Yoko Taro, and I mean, I will be in. I'm. I I have the demo downloaded on my Switch. I haven't even touched it yet. Um, uh, I, Choco- I'll see. Chocobo GP. That that actually style. looks kind of fun. Yeah. Just take my money. <laughs> like, no, we don't need to say much more other than that. Looks like it might be, it, it might be the racer that you can play while you wait the next fifteen years for another Mario Kart. Uh, Act Razor uh, uh, Renaissance looks. That looks like, really cool. No, it looks. It like looks cool, shit. but it also. <laughs> But also graphically, it looks like horse shit. It especially I've seen some of the other technical reviews on it. It plays bad on every console. It's very unoptimized. It, that sucks. It there are elements of the art that look good, but don't pay more than ten bucks. Is is sort of the consensus. Yeah, it, that's it's unfortunate. A, it's a buy and discount. Yeah, sure. Dying Light Two uh, Cloud Edition. Cloud Who the edition. fuck wants to play that on a Switch? If you're gonna play, unless it, you. If you're gonna play it on Unless Stadia, ha- play it on actual Stadia, so you can play it at yeah. like 1080p instead of 720. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Deltarune Chapter Two. I still haven't played uh, either of his games, so I mean, I... okay. So, have you ever played Earthbound? Yes, a bit of it. How far into Earthbound did you um, get to anything the... where got... you go? What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I got to where it got weird, and then I just. Okay, I, I had to return the okay. rental back in the day. Okay, so you so you're no, you know you you kind of know what you get. I know into. the fetus baby boss monster at the end. I know that because <laughs> I had friends that yeah. played it. You know you know what you're getting into. So, All uh, right. Animal Crossing, yada yada, High Rule Warriors, Age of Calamity expansion, neat. Yeah, um, that's if only a pretty the, fun. If game. only that game ran at a stable FPS. See, I don't know. I've never had any problems with it personally. I mean, you also play docked. Yeah, because I don't know, like Castlevania Advance Collection that, that Shadow Drop, that's which is available. Definitely I'm gonna ev- get. And then it, then it got. Uh, I think it was like four. I think it was like a week, and now it's on everything. Yeah, like it was the f- cool Disney Magical World Two. Wasn't that a? DS that is title? a 3DS port. Yeah. Okay. Whoop de doo doo. Uh, Shadowrun Trilogy, Rune Factory 5, Arcade Shadowrun, I'm fucking into, man. Um, I mean, if they're giving you all three games for with like all, 30 bucks. It's all three games with every piece of DLC. Yeah, that's yeah, an amazing like, deal. I think it's 30 bucks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, and you can't really go wrong there. Uh, more free DLC for Super Rush, the, the golf game. Uh, Mario Party Superstars has shown off a little bit more. Um, Which I'm excited for because yeah. Mario Party and... If you if you guys ever I I'm picking it up so if you guys want to test the online be my guest <laughs> yeah I mean sure you and the big one I think for me and I don't know how big it is for Mike but this is an Alex game through and through was the Kirby and the Forgotten Land uh yeah. I'd give it a whirl I mean if I got a review it, copy I mean, I'd definitely give it a try I mean it's it's Kirby Odyssey basically yeah that's basically, what I thought for the second everyone, that I saw it for everyone that um. All the big Kirby fans, they kind of knew this was coming because of well, they how didn't, they didn't know Star that it was going to be just just like how Star Allies was built, like the way Star Allies was built, it was a stepping stone to make it a 3D. yeah. I don't think people expected it to be a, a fully open world. Yeah, that's the surprise. They thought it was probably going to be like like New Super Levels. Mario, where it's level yeah, yeah level based, but this appears to be an entire world or at least in the island sections sections that will load like here's the whole city now what i want to see and will be fucking awesome and i i i I don't know i am maybe getting the feeling like what if you're playing through this and you start to realize that you're in new donk city but like a thousand years given the fact that kirby well well if you know kirby lore earth is a apocalyptic world yeah so in the Kirby I, I know a bit, i only know a bit of that so like for me i'm like is are we gonna see like like the eiffel like not that sorry the like empire state we're gonna, building i mean 
obviously the final boss is going to be some eldritch horror thing <laughs> yeah but are we going to like go around it looks like a normal part normal part and then you'll go into part of the level and you'll fight, face a boss and it will you know destroy some of the land around and it will reveal that it, it like a street name or whatever and you'll cl- clearly see that it's new donk city that'd be funny or or like you go to the subway system and if you look at the map you can see that it says you know new donk city that, that that'd be cool thing. so i mean i i don't know if they would go that route but i kind of get the feeling that's what they're leaning towards that you're gonna be like holy shit like this is this is a world where mario's no longer here and and Kirby is, you know, what can save hope for the, the Nintendo world. And I guess isn't that kind of how they they went with uh, Smash, with the storyline for the new game? Yeah, where like he's the one that has to save everybody from being. Well, it, I mean, it's also so- uh, Kirby's Sakurai's baby, so it yeah. makes sense. So I'm I'm wondering now that now that Smash is done. Will he go to fo- like? I know they're saying, "Oh, he might just retire." He's not going to retire. He's not that. He's kind not going to. Re- he's he's someone that will never retire. Is are they going to trust him to make a new franchise IP? There, he's going to do whatever the fuck he wants. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like they have not tried a new IP since what? Like Splatoon, the, Splatoon, and then there was like that Dylan's Rolling, Arms. whatever, an arm. But they've all been mostly failures, except for Splatoon. Like, if they want another pillar mascot. He might be the only one that not only would the company board of directors trust, but that Miyamoto would give his, you know, fellowship approval to. Yeah, well, to actually do it. Let's let's be let's be honest. Nintendo has until Miyamoto retires, which I doubt it. He'll retire. Uh, do you think when he's gonna... Miyamoto passes, Nintendo's going to have a major shift in what how the... it does? games even if it's just for show and and he runs his own company i feel like when miyamoto goes they're gonna put sakurai into that fellowship position even if it's just like to bolster up the the like he he won't even also even if it's temporary too yeah until they find somebody like it'll be something to to shield them from stock plummeting yeah just they're like oh because he's like there is no other superstar within the company that is known like that he is yeah. this generation's Miyamoto of the 80s and 90s in how he's presented his, in his public image. And just in general, the, the man, the man has, is a wreck of a human being. Let's yeah. be honest. I, I know. Well, obviously he'll be able to sleep finally once he. <laughs> yes, he can finally he's... sleep. <laughs> gets, get some, uh, there was a great joke. Uh, I think Maximilian made this joke on his uh reaction stream where he was like you know what would be funny is if sakurai was like you know what the dlc is the fact that you said that i should need i should take a vacation here's some pictures of my vacation that's your that's your final smash (laughs) character if he disappears for like a year or two and we see him again and he's put on like 30 pounds you're like holy shit he finally ate Cause that dude looks like a skeleton. Like he's clearly. <laughs> he, he, yeah. He, so I mean, I, I think, I think he's act. He actually has a medical condition. It was, well, I know, I know he's skinny, he, but he's, I saw him do weird interview. Well, he did an interview with the guy from, was it the Tekken guy where he's like, Oh yeah. That interview is just mess. Well, let's he, be honest. He, the, he can't the drink guy that, water. <laughs> the, the guy that does. The, the guy that does Tekken, he is the biggest proponent against rollback netcode in fighting games right now in Japan. He really is. Yeah, and I, I don't know a ton about him except that he's he has been somebody who's caused a lot of memes to pop up. Oh, he's a meme machine. He's a meme factory for the fighting game community, but overall, like he's the only he's pretty much the one person in fighting games in japan that is adamantly against rollback in terms of just rollback that actually works because technically tekken has rollback but it doesn't have actual rollback 
it's got their own imp- implementation or, or interpretation. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, it, it's, yeah, it, it's good that he's done. We got all like, and that's, I guess, to finish off the discussion that just happened is, you know, they announced Sora as the final, we, we had our predictions. Master Chief was chief amongst it when, but because of his comment about how, uh, it might be a character that's not as familiar. Is Kingdom Hearts not popular in Japan? Oh no, Kingdom. It, it, apparently, uh, this came out. He was Sora was the top of the ballot for that, U.S. and Japan, while Bayonetta okay. was the top in Europe. Okay, because like he, I know he he was trying to dumb it down. Like he was making it sound like nobody watching would know what Kingdom Hearts was. Oh, he's. Pl- Sakurai likes to troll. We all know that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's you know what I mean. Like I wasn't sure if he was being facetious. I, I think or... he was trolling there because uh, and a lot of people were saying, "Oh, how you know how did they work that magic?" He worked that magic. It's like no, it was quite clear that Square and Disney wanted to put all their games now that they had milked everything they possibly could from PC, Xbox, and PlayStation users. They wanted to go into that lucrative Switch market in Japan. On because... top of the fact that uh disney has kind of changed their tune in terms of video games well not and and they these were some of the most successful games for square recently but also in disney licenses they want things that are critically acclaimed and having a switch port even cloud-based what it helps it with is in japan everything's wi-fi so and they have a decent infrastructure japan japan's internet infrastructure is so stupidly good that it doesn't it, matter. It, stupidly good unless you want a dedicated LAN connection. <laughs> so, well, of course. Why, why if their Wi-Fi networks are fantastic. Like, they're not all Wi-Fi 6, obviously, but they have, like, you're you're hard-pressed to find an area in, a, in public where you can't get a decent wireless AC connection for free or for yeah. a couple bucks, of, uh, you know, for almost nothing. So having you Stadia's cloud gaming in the background, like, these are games that you need a high-speed internet connection to play. It's they're releasing them together as uh what is it kingdom hearts 1.5 2.5 2.8 and 3 so it's It's, everything it's it's the all in one 1.5 1.5 2.5 uh 2.8 prologue and and uh and three yeah so it's the that big like 90 and also they and also it's three all in one including the dlc yeah so it's everything uh, that you would have paid like a hundred bucks for on that PlayStation deal they had. It was uh, like, I, it would be 120. Yeah. I think was the retail for it. And you're probably going to get it for 80 bucks or or 70 bucks or yeah, 60, you, whatever you, it is for a regular price, but you will not, game. you cannot play it offline. It will not function whatsoever. It is only oh, yeah. streaming because meaning, it's running the PS4 versions. Yeah. It's running. It, it's, it's, uh, it's running except for, except for KH3. Yeah, I was. You're right. Cage three will be running the PC version that is on Stadia, because it's they're all yes. Stadia based. So fully expect if they're not already announced that Stadia will announce that they have versions of it available because it's running the same thing. Um, yeah, it's the same bloody thing. <laughs> it's like it's the same thing, only it's going to run at 720p because they don't yeah. have the the switch even in wired mode doesn't have the bandwidth to support uh 1080p high quality streaming because so, nintendo likes to do its own thing exactly so it, it's going to be interesting and that that is why disney went along with it because they had plans to release the game on that platform they're now going to hit potentially what are we at like are we getting close to 100 million switches uh i believe we're nearly there or already past that yeah, so like there's a, and of those people that don't have another way of playing those games. I mean, with the if if they haven't hit it already with the OLED launch, they're going to hit it. Yeah, like and let's say a third of Switch users do not have another means to play those games or or wouldn't want to. And some people are going to want to double dip whatever. There's potentially 30 million copies that they can sell of the, that franchise all all together. Yep. So, they're looking at that going, "Sure, we'll give you Sora." Because they have potential to make a billion dollars off of the deal of putting those games on the Switch, like and, and that'll and, probably and, and no that'll joke. probably be like a January release or something. Yeah, if if they can't get it out for the holidays, they'll get it out in January. Yeah, I mean they 
uh subsequently like an hour after the direct uh square enix dropped a kingdom hearts celebration trailer because it's the 20th anniversary next year okay so yeah that's what yeah okay so they'll do something they're probably going to make like a little animated video to celebrate it and they'll slap it on the the streaming of the game or something but that is that was it they showed off some uh what was it some costumes for your me fighters and that was it yep doom guy (laughs) so cool and that's that's everything i mean yeah there's probably stuff we missed and then but there are things that weren't important to us uh like there's still a lot of games we're waiting to hear about coming in the new year there's a lot of games clustered right now in october the beginning of november and then there's a hell of a lot for this from the second week of january to the second week of march it's going to be insane unless they start moving things around i mean for me it's going to be a switch holiday season because everything i'm getting is on switch and like what about you mike what are you thinking like as far as the the ratio of of like console like which console has the most games that you saw this summer coming to it that you want to play i think the switch has a surprising amount of things and i think i think the big dark horse this year that i think is really going to surprise people i really think nick all-star brawl is going to do a lot better than people think by the um, way, when uh probably by the when this comes out, it'll still be twenty percent off for the it's twenty percent off everywhere digitally for the entire first week of I lunch. am trying so hard not to buy it right now, but Alex put in a request for it. Yeah, and I'm we, calling we, hard and I'm really trying to resist the urge to call we, my PR up because I, I know them personally. <laughs> yeah, we 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 I think we sent out initial like inquiry about it like a month ago and actually today the day of release i received a press email saying hey get in touch if you'd like a review copy i'm like so i did and i'm like we already requested it and if we don't hear back in a day or two i think it might be a case of like you're so excited you might end up buying it yeah (laughs) and if you did then i would take the review copy if we got it and we can play it together oh it depends on what console (laughs) yeah yeah you, you would completely destroy me (laughs) <laughs> uh, apparently apparently the net code needs a little bit of work but overall it's just kind of like a patch kind of thing yeah it's something code. that that could be fixed i was actually patch. i was uh joking with uh, another youtuber on twitter today and i was like please tell me the final boss is mark summers on the set of fucking double dare because that would be amazing or you fight uh oteb from legends of the hidden temple ultimately that would be my game of the year fuck everything else i just fought well, mark summers with powder toast man now i want oh, i want oteb to have a big fight with what's the name of the tiki mask from crash oh uh, shit you know the one where he's like look at them all <laughs> tiki tiki or toki toki or some shit like that yeah have fuck. them fight, have them fight it out but yeah, like I don't know. I I, I think that's gonna do. It. I think um, I think Mario Party is gonna do better than expected because most Nintendo titles typically do. I, I don't mean, think it's Battle. Also, it's also it's also a Mario Party that on launch has multiplayer online for the boards. I I feel like SMT five is not like people are thinking it's not gonna sell. I think it's gonna sell better than any other. It's game gonna be a sleeper hit in the yeah. franchise and it's part of it's going to be from its design style going back to nocturne which sold i think okay at least but i think it's going to get that persona royal and strikers push that people it, yeah it's probably expecting. gonna yeah that's what i think too my my only thing is the fact that i have pokemon to deal i'm playing I'm going to yeah. be playing Pokemon when that comes well, out. So it's kind of like Mike and well, I talk. If we do review copies of things, I think Mike, you're taking Pokemon this time, so I can do SMT if if we get it. Yeah, exactly. Like we're going to divide and conquer. Then if I get Pokemon Shining Pearl, he gets Arxis or whatever the fuck it's called. Then I'm just going to buy that because that looks really interesting to me. There's been a couple pockets this year where we were, where I was sent like five RPGs at once, and I'm like, I can't. I, I almost. <laughs> I pull the Sakurai stuff where I'm doing like 36 hours straight almost on a game to get the review out. Like I, I, we received Far Cry on Friday, right? Or was it? Yeah, I think it, was it was Friday. And with, with the embargo up uh, as of today, actually. Um, but, you know, obviously they're like, oh yeah, get to us in a week. 
I beat it yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I am just exploring the mainland now, and I play Far Cry games in a very specific way. I take out all the encampments, plus now I'm punching way above my fucking weight class right now, so right. I'm getting guns and shit I shouldn't I, have this early on. Oh, I did everything except for, for a few drop missions. I mean, I, I cleared it, like everything. And so, I mean... Is is uh, what did I do? It had to be twenty to no wait, 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 wait. probably thirty I mean, to forty get, hours. Yeah. So well, I mean that, that's, that's what that's what people are saying. It's like forty hours. And game. that's and that's how I play. So when I get four of those games at once, I'll, I'll go insane. So I can't do I can't do three RPGs or four RPGs at once. So uh, Pokemon might be the exception because of the style of game. You can get through it pretty quickly. But you want to enjoy Pokemon's that game. my comfort take, food. <laughs> exactly. You want to take your time with that kind of game and, and get through it. And SMT, I feel like, is going to be pretty heady. That's going to be like a 120-hour game. <laughs> now, I will I will play it on the Merciful difficulty if they've got it. Because especially... I, if, believe, I believe they said it's already got Merciful. Because they, they, can't, they can't sell that kind of a hard RPG anymore to the West. It just won't like if they they will lose the appeal they received when Persona Four Golden came out and really started the ball ball rolling with their titles here. So it, it's going to be interesting in the uh, the fall and holiday season. Gaming wise, we're going to do a follow up uh, as far as like end of the year what what's coming in the new year thing as we get closer. So I think Mike, we've talked briefly about what as we're winding down the show here what we're doing prototype wise we'll probably do an episode uh that is we're definitely like, gonna do something on the game awards it'll we'll be def- yeah, the game awards where we can discuss what what the the awards show and then like release what our picks would have been mm-hmm. so and I, then we'll probably do sort of sort of like a year in review sort of like what we liked what we didn't like from yeah. this past year and honestly this has been the year i've been the least engaged in gaming, which is kind of funny because this is a year of COVID. What else am I going to fucking do? You did a um, lot more reading. Yeah. Than, like I've done years. more. Yeah. Like I've done a lot more reading this year. I also, like I said, almost fucking died and yeah, I just but, played yeah. a lot of comfort food games. How is that any different from 2017, 2018, yeah, 2019? <laughs> I, no, I was pretty good in 2019 up until, um, well, yeah, but yeah. Well, yeah. We had, we had a good pocket. We had a good run. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's like this year, I just like the only things I've really been playing, I'm playing nothing new except Far Cry right now um i bought dragon ball z xenoverse because it was like 10 bucks and that was the last game i reviewed on rad so many years ago and it's such a different game now it's almost unrecognizable um in some ways and i was like i'm having more fun with this than almost anything i've gotten for review this year and even when i played WarioWare get it together yeah i had fun with it it's just I was left wanting more. So this is the year where I don't know. I feel less engaged with the gaming community, but I know that's because of COVID. That's just the way it is. Well, we talked about moods affecting what kind of games you play. I think on the podcast this week, I'm wondering, do you think that some of it can be like, people don't realize it could be like subconscious depression or, or just like, not ADD, but like so many things going on that it takes a specific game or to put you in a specific mood to play. Well, I've yeah. Had bout, I've had bouts where I didn't want to play games for two or three months, and all I did was watch movies. And then I had times yep. where I'm like, I don't want to watch movies at all. So I'll go through I mean, those cycles. I mean, I've I literally until uh, I was able to go back to the theaters, I barely watched any movies. <laughs> Yeah, like, I, I and played totally... games. I just gamed the heck out of it. Yeah, so exactly, we go through these of last year. Flows, so. These these big waves that way. Now, in seeing that, Mike, do you think that next year, like I know, Forspoken, that's on my radar. Like that's a must play. But are you like, do you think your mood might change for like? Because we didn't talk about anything Microsoft really related. Because at this Halo, point now, maybe. Yeah, I was going to say, but at this point... I mean, Halo's in with, December. With everything going like, Game Pass, it, it doesn't even enter my mind anymore about any and I, I about any of their new releases. At the same time, I haven't played Flight Simulator, and I've wanted to play that so much. It's just There's something about getting a game for free or perceptually getting it free. 
that uh, you just you just don't think about it. You, you you lose interest in any urgency in playing. Yeah, like there's no there's no investment. Yeah, like you haven't put down your hard earned money. You put twenty bucks. That's an that's yeah. a that's an order of coffee for you and your friends going to work. Yeah, like, and, I mean for me for me personally, it was like Game Pass has actually gotten me to play more games. I mean, I've got I I've beaten more games this year than I have in a while. No, I own most of the Game Pass games. I'm like, well, this is fuck um heck, well i heck i i've bought two game two games when they left game pass i've bought gato robato and i've bought eichenfell which is easily one of the best games that i played this year that came out last year i think the, i bought and, grand theft auto 5 because because it was like 15 bucks now like again looking at it i know that we're going from a slightly different perspective like they're when you're a reviewer you're not paying for something to get the review you're doing it you know for the journalism part of it but there is still the sense of urgency because you have a commitment that you know you sign a thing saying hey we're going to review this and talk about it so that's why that has the same feeling as when you buy a game yourself but i almost feel like mike maybe if we didn't get review copies at all do you think something like a game pass would keep you interested to play more games maybe like like i don't know like you pretty much hit it right on the head there like my mood vastly determines what i do and obviously being bipolar certainly doesn't help but you know shit still has to get done so i don't know like yeah like i know we've had discussions where you're like am i just being an asshole today and a couple times i've been like yeah i think so because that's a good game yeah (laughs) and then sometimes and then sometimes i'm like no dude no, 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 no. That's a bad game, and your mood's going to get tanked because it's a bad game. <laughs> yeah, because, th- like, th- uh, when we played World War Z the other day, um, re- I re- had a re- re- review forthcoming. <laughs> yeah, um, I had um, a laundry list of complaints, but then yeah. once I played it with people, it got a little bit better. Yeah. But then I started to see chinks in the armor, and I'm thinking, for fuck's sake, it's 2021. Why can't I talk to you? Yeah, like um, your your initial talk to me was, is it just me? Am I just in a foul mood, or why, is this not like the worst game ever made? And I'm like, it's not the worst game ever made. There's flaws. And then we came back a couple days later to play it together, and you're like, actually, it's a lot better than I thought. Yeah. And so you're you're right. Yeah, moods can definitely affect it. So like, I think maybe like the the Nick Brawlers is going to be something that can raise your mood. I hope bit. so. Uh, I feel like in the future coming next year things like that stray game where you're playing as a kitty cat or uh the tmnt game yes I think that looks good, amazing there's certain ones that i can i get the feeling are going to be something that you'll get engaged with because it'll become like comfort food like yeah you said. yeah like this past couple of weeks my comfort food has been well the last week has been dragon ball because it's so much fun when you don't have to grind for shit um and mass effect i'm three quarters of the way through mass effect three and it was bumming me out because i was so getting into the into the head of the characters and the lore i needed to step away for a bit like blair my wife had said maybe mike you should back off for a bit and do something else so and before kicking that, the was... crap out of golden freeze that was a lot more fun it was it was Ghost of Tsushima, like, and then that bummed me out because that game has a very dark. Ooh, setup. that ending! And, yeah, and, and you pick you picked the pansy ending. You didn't pick the canon ending. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, I I I did both just to see when it because when I got it for a review, like I told you last year, I'm like this game is one of the best games I've ever played, and I'm not usually an Assassin's Creed style game player. It's just like. It's like, oh man, Ubisoft should watch this game and go, this is how we should make our games. But, and, and you were, it was right at the same time you were reviewing The Last of Us. And I, you were like, you were like, you said your mood was messed up for like two days after that. Game. I had pretty bad nightmares after one particular section in that game. And, and, and that's and the like, first time I've ever experienced that as a reviewer of any media. And you said that, like, not only was it that, you said, you kept telling me it, it's like a really fantastic game, but it's so heavy emotionally. And I was, and when at one game of the year, like I see them and I was like, I think that that ghost should have won based on how much fun I had with it and everything. And I told you to try it, but 
we just never got around to having you play it yeah and, like, and then and then when we got the review codes like i one of the first things you said to me when you started playing it you, you said you weren't wrong this is fantastic yeah like once i started getting all my moves and everything like i did play the game on narrative difficulty but i felt like a fucking badass and it was awesome and well, but and, then and, and don't be don't be deterred because narrative difficulty you can still die in a couple hits if you mess oh up yeah up. like yeah if you're stupid you're gonna die fast but yeah but i guess long story short folks hopefully you've enjoyed uh today's conversation we should have we've got a lot of stuff coming up on the site alex has uh turtle treasure coming up this week which will have the re- the aforementioned review of uh world war z aftermath we reviewed that on the playstation 5 and xbox series x a um, couple of movies from Warner Brothers Home Entertainment. Lots of good stuff. I'm still, I'm going to have to talk with uh, JT to do a Twig Sunday Funnies because I, we were going to talk about Shang-Chi, but that's coming out in November. So we might as well just hit it then and Hawkeye will be on. What If concludes as of this recording tomorrow. So that's a pretty easy watch through. We also have Venom Let There Be Carnage, which I still haven't seen yet. Mostly just, I've just been really, really busy. Um, Plus, we do record Session Zero uh, for Stargate Twig, and then we start launching. So we'll have a couple of episodes under our belt for Christmas. We'll take the mid-season break until January, and then we'll go back through the gate again. And then who knows what we're what we're gonna end up playing kind of next year. So um I, I'm, I'm there's get, a lot of stuff. I, I'm thinking, depending on how things work out, we might be trying out at least the quick start rules for the Marvel game. Yeah, there's Marvel. I already have a partially developed campaign for Fallout Canada. I I'm have buying, one I oh, would nice. call it Toronto. Uh I've got I got on order that Goblin Slayer uh, RPG. Yes. And and I even got the Konosuba one, which I think would not be something we want to play, just because I'm I want to see what it's like to get a manga book that is a TRPG. That's pretty cool. One so, I would love to try is the uh, Avatar: The Last uh, Airbender slash Korra. That looks really cool. Power Rangers, Rangers, Power Rangers. Tran- Transformers, and GI Joe. I think that's the trifecta eventually yeah. to try. Yeah, like yeah. we've got a lot of stuff coming out yeah. in the next couple of months. Like Plus I said, our, our, our month of Cronenberg starts uh, this week. This week, yep. Which um, I have to talk with Alex to see what I'm going to watch because I am uh, so backed up with homework right now. But... Okay, well, w- even if you have to jump in, whatever. The first week we're going to. I want to see Shivers because that looks fucking yes. awesome. Okay, you're, you're this week. It'll be sh- it's four movies, but you can sort of skip one of them if you want to. Um, yeah. The, you, I would say because we're, you can skip the third one, but the first two uh, are Shivers, also known as They Came what? From Within, something, and then there's another title, like something about Blood Orgy. Um, yeah. Then, so Shivers, uh, Rabid, yep. uh, starring porn star Marilyn Chambers. Uh, and then you have the one that you can skip that Aaron and I will talk about uh, is Fast Company, which mm-hmm. is the the non Cronenberg Cronenberg movie where he, he directed a 1970s drag racing movie starring uh, John Saxon and uh, Nicholas Campbell. <laughs> so uh, it's very odd and different. And then <laughs> the other one you're going to watch is the brood. Yeah. Cause those look awesome. Like I'm in the horror movie, so that looks pretty neat. So we're going to be talking the, the, about, and the following week will be his eighties movies where we're going to talk about uh, scanners, video drone, the fly, uh, we might skip the fly only in that, like, I think a lot of people already know about the fly. Yeah. Everyone uh, and their moms has talked about it. Yeah. And we might skip the dead zone because I, I, I don't know if Aaron has seen it, but if he hasn't, he can watch it. But you saw the dead zone. So. Yeah. I watched that in the hospital this year and I really liked it. So, yeah. So, and then I think the, the last one we'll include from that list might be dead ringers. Yeah. Um, and then we'll jump forward and one more week because then we'll be right at Halloween. We're yep. going to skip a lot of his artsy stuff. So we're not going to do some of the 90s and 2000s stuff, but we are going to do... Uh, Existence pro- or whatever. At, and... probably, from the 90s, we're probably going to do Existence and Crash. Uh, we're going to skip Naked Lunch because it's too weird and it just doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, and then we're going to do History of Violence and uh, Eastern Promises because I don't think either of you have seen those. I've Even- seen bits and pieces of Eastern Promises because for some reason when I went to college, that was a big meme. Don't know oh, why. <laughs> it, it, uh, it's probably the bathhouse Because of the scene. nut scene. Yeah. Yeah. 
So yeah, we're going to talk about that. Plus this week we're going to be releasing classic Halloween episodes leading up to our, uh, our actual yes. Halloween episode, which will be, uh, <laughs> Meaning we I talk- have to, I have to pull those and get those ready. So probably if, if I'm going to be conservative about it, probably Friday. Yeah. Probably like- something for the weekend so yes yes basically on the weekends we'll have classic episodes coming the uh Twitter treasure will probably be thursday or friday um and as well as our uh our loose cannon on cronenberg will start this week as well so there might be some days where you have double podcasts um but we'll space them out like six hours apart or something because it before we know it it's going to be halloween yeah, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on. Plus, uh, I guess before we go out, I am doing some provincial uh, government work in the next couple of weeks. And uh, there are stories to tell. And to find out what happened, you're going to have to tune into this week's show of uh, thisweekingeek.net. So let's wrap this up, boys. So yes, for well, This Week in Geek. Before we oh, do sorry. that, we, yes. we have a guess. So what are you up to, Ken? What are you going to, yes. what do you want to, what do you want to pimp out? Are you back to doing your, your, this anime and, and your movie podcast? Uh, so the, the recording that we had back in July, that's coming out at the end of the month. Hell um, yeah. <laughs> finally. Because uh, I've, I've just been sitting on it. Um, the plan is eventually to get Mike on, but uh, it's, it's a matter of just scheduling and everything. Uh, I do have, I am at the tail end of finishing what has been a year and a half of deep diving into Tokyo Ghoul that has been enlightening to say the least um they fucked that anime adaptation up so bad <laughs> so basically we'll have to listen for that <laughs> ooh boy and and the, and, a... and if you wanted to find you on social media find those where do we find yep. you at ken reels pretty much everywhere <laughs> and the the podcast titles are this anime right and this anime podcast.com is where you can find pretty much anything uh movie nation is yeah on indefinite hiatus until <laughs> i can figure out how the hell to we market f- that and we got a that. few of those that are that are on indefinite hiatus so we completely understand so yes back to you michael close us yes out. all right so anyway for this week in geek we have been alex the producer Ken. i've been mike the birdman saying be excellent to each other and we'll catch you guys again next time right here on this week in geek response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought thanks for listening to this episode of this week in geek hungry for more check out our website at thisweekingeek.net you can subscribe to the podcast browse our twitter and instagram and leave your thoughts on today's topics if you'd like to give us some feedback send us an email at feedback at thisweekingeek.net tune in next time and remember lower your shields and surrender your listenership we would be honored if you would join us. Thank you for your cooperation. Good night.